Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I'm going to show you how to use the Motion Sketch feature here inside After Effects. Now if you look around the internet, you're going to see other Motion Sketch tutorials, but I haven't seen any that show you how to make a specific path. As in this case, for example, we want to take this ship on a Caribbean cruise, so we want it to follow a very specific path, stopping off at some ports of call along the way. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson. But before we get there, I want to show you some general features about the Motion Sketch feature. The Motion Sketch is not an effect, it's a panel. So to get to a panel, you go up to Window, and then there's Motion Sketch. Now if I click on that, it'll show up over here, which is fine, but sometimes when you work with Motion Sketch, you also work with a couple of other panels. So you might as well go over here to the Workspace and change it to Animation. Click that drop down arrow there and go to Animation. And there's Motion Sketch here along with Wiggler and Smoother. Now I'm not a big fan of Wiggler. I use the Wiggle expression instead, but there it is. Wiggler tends to make things more erratic. And then there's Smoother, which removes keyframes to try to make things smoother. But we're going to focus on Motion Sketch for the time being. There it is there. Motion Sketch has some default settings. It's capture speed 100%, smoothing 1, wireframe, and then start and duration. Now the way Motion Sketch works is that when you start it up, then you start moving an object around the screen, it records that motion, it creates keyframes for any changes that you make, and does that in real time. So it looks exactly like the way you drew it, which is really cool, because if you try to do keyframes one at a time, for example, it's really tedious when you've got a lot of keyframes and a lot of motion, so it's very helpful when you use it that way. You don't have to set it to 100%. If you change it to 50%, for example, then as you record things and play it back, it'll play back twice as fast as you recorded it, just so you know. It lets you make a more precise path because it gives you more time to set that path, but when you play it back, it'll be twice as fast as when you made it, things like that. If smoothing is set to 1, that means any change you make will show up as a keyframe. If you increase smoothing, then it reduces the number of keyframes, but you might as well keep it set to 1 because you can always change it later using the smoother. Wireframe is the default setting, which means that as you work with this, it turns the screen black and all you see is a little box here as you move it around the screen, which is how a lot of people explain Motion Sketch, but I want you to see this background, so we'll show you how to do that in a moment. Background is what you turn on if you want to see the background. Then there's Start and Duration, which is confusing for a lot of folks because you wonder how to set this. It's sort of stuck here, you can't change it. Well, it's set by your work area bar, just so you know. Work area bar right now is the full width of this comp, which is 15 seconds long, and Start over here and the end is over there, so that's starting at zero and lasting for 15 seconds. But if you change the work area bar to something else, for example, just change it to there, and then so it'll start at four seconds and then go to the end of the comp, which is about 11 seconds after that. So that's how that is set. It's set by the work area bar. And lots of times you want to do an animation not necessarily starting at the beginning of the comp. You may want to start it someplace into the comp and have it end before the end of the comp. And that's how you set the animation start and duration over there. We'll put this guy back to the beginning by double clicking on the work area bar. There you go. All right, now we're ready to do a little capture, and I'm going to show you how to do the capture just with the wireframe, and then we'll show you how to do it with the background. So now when I click on Start Capture, nothing happens. You don't need to rush over and start moving that object around. It just waits for you until you do the first little bit of motion. The cursor does change, though. See how it has that little four-point cursor there? look kind of like a compass. I'm going to drag it over here and start moving it around. Once I start moving it, then it starts recording it, and you'll see the current time indicator moving across the bottom of the screen, and you get the little path there as you draw this. And it's kind of random, obviously. You can stop. You can go fast. You can go slow, fast, stop, and it records all these guys with keyframes. I'll open this up by pressing the U key to see all the keyframes, and those are all the keyframes. You can see where it stopped there because it went from here to there and didn't move. And then the bunch of motion that goes by quickly is shown elsewhere. Let's just see how this thing plays. I'll start from right about there, and it sort of settles down for a while, then zip across there and settles down. And goes slowly and goes up. So it actually records all this motion and records it in the speed that you did it, which I think is just a really cool, fun feature. I'm going to get rid of all those keyframes by either selecting them all and pressing delete, or I just do control or command Z to get rid of them that way. All right, let's try that again now with the background visible, which is a much more effective way to do things. So I'm going to take this guy to the beginning of the cruise over there, right there. And I'm going to click on background. And I'm going to keep wireframe on because it is helpful to see that. You don't see the object. You do see the wireframe around it. With that thing turned off, this little box goes away. So it's nice to have wireframe on. Click on Start Capture. Don't do anything yet. But now once we click and go, it's going to start moving along. So I'm going to go down here to San Juan. Go over here to Santo Domingo. Stop for a while. Go down to Jamaica, to Kingston. Stop for a while. Go really convoluted way like that to go over to Havana, stop for a while, and then that's the end of our little voyage. Let's take a look at how that plays out, that little 15 second voyage there. There we go. It stops, which is nice. Follows the route we made. All the swooping changes, stops in Kingston for a while. Takes this really convoluted routing to get to Havana. 
and it stops. Looks pretty good. I like just the way that worked out. But the thing is, if I want to change something now, let's say I want it to go from Havana and go off the screen, you know, I've already filled up the time here. I could start it over again, do it again. But rather than do that, I'm going to change these keyframes to give me a little more time. I'll show you a little trick here if you don't know about this. Now that all the keyframes are selected, take this last one, hold down the Alt or the Option key, click on that and drag it left, and notice how they all move, but they don't slide off the screen. They just kind of move in concert with each other like that. So I'm going to move it left like that and give myself like two seconds to get from Havana off the screen. And now I'm going to do motion capture from this point forward. So I'm going to take my work area bar and move it right here to the current time indicator. To do that, I press the B key for begin. That takes the work area bar right to the current time indicator like that. So now let's do motion capture again from this point forward, because it says right now we're starting at 1301 and going for basically two seconds. I click on Start Capture. Nothing happens yet until I start moving it, but now I'm going to go, and two seconds later, we're off the screen like that. So you can do these things after the fact like that. Let's see how that works. We get to Havana, settles down for a while, and then off we go off the screen like that. All right, let's take the work area bar back to the beginning by double-clicking on it like that. Don't have to do it, but that's just a good form to do that. So now you see how that all works. You can drag through there like that. And I kind of like the way this thing works. I think I would like to have it stay in Havana a little longer. I could adjust these keyframes to do that. So let's say it gets right down there and it goes on to the next keyframe like that. I can take this keyframe right like there and pull it a little bit to the left. And that'll keep it there a little bit longer. It settles down there for a while, then it goes away. You can always adjust the keyframes after the fact. Now if I go to the smoother, it'll reduce the number of keyframes. I'll select all the keyframes by clicking on the word position. And I'm going to change the smoother tolerance to something greater than 1. If I click apply now with 1 as the setting, it'll change them by adding keyframes. Not exactly what we had in mind here. The controller commands even do that. I want to reduce the number of keyframes to try to make it smoother that way. So I'm going to increase the tolerance to something like, I don't know, 5 or 6, something like that. There you go. Now I click Apply and watch the number of keyframes down here. Ready? 1, 2, 3, go. Fewer keyframes now, right? And that's good and bad. It's going to make things a little bit smoother along the way, but it tends to make the ship not stay in port for as long as we wanted sometimes. It Sometimes it reduces the keyframes where we want it to stick around for a while. It's kind of a little unpredictable when it talks about staying in place for a while. So I'm not totally sold on using the smoother to smooth things up, but what you can do is you don't have to do the whole darn group of keyframes. I'll do Controller Command Z to back up a bit here like that. If I want to just do, let's say, the ship between one port and another, like from Jamaica there, from Kingston, I can click away and just accept these keyframes from there to there. So I can just highlight these guys by marquee selecting them like so, like that. And then I can just do the smoother on those keyframes rather than the ports of call where it was stopping for a while. So I can use smoother there and it just affects just those keyframes to kind of make that motion be a little bit smoother from there to there. There you go. Now I'm going to take a pass on the wiggler, but if I were to use the wiggler I could make this thing jerky, kind of bounce around a lot, which is obviously not what we want to do here. But let me show you one more thing. It's called Auto Orient. And sometimes people use Auto Orient when they use Motion Sketch because they want to have the object that's moving around the screen basically look like a roller coaster, like it's matching the shape of the curve. Obviously we don't want our ship to be bouncing all over the place to do that, but I do want to show you how to use Auto Orient. Auto Orient is inside the Layer menu. That's how you find it. So you go to Layer, go down to Transform, which by the way, whenever you use something that moves, you can almost always find that thing inside the Transform part of the Layer menu. Going down here to Auto Orient there, your choice is off or on, essentially. Along the path like that, watch what happens now. It flips it over when I click OK, which is not what you want to happen, right? So you got to go back to Layer again and fix that by going Layer, Transform, and let's say we'll flip it horizontal, and let's go back there again. Layer transform. Doesn't necessarily work the way you want it to like this. And then we'll flip it vertical now too. Now we're kind of back in business. Kind of a process to get it to do that. But notice how it follows the shape of the curve, which is whoa, we're upside down. Now we're right side up. But if this were a roller coaster that you're designing here, then auto orient would be kind of a good thing. In any event, that's how you use motion sketch, and in particular how you use motion sketch to create a specific path.